Welcome to our War Within Discipline Priest starter video. Whether you are a veteran player eager to get ahead in the new expansion, or maybe you're just curious about the latest changes for Discipline Priest, well, this video is definitely for you. We're going to cover everything that you need to hit the ground running. A look at what's new for Disc Priest in the War Within, the top talent choices, the most optimal races, the best gear loadouts, and as a bonus, we're also going to include some essential macros that you will not want to be without. And if you are ready to dominate in the War Within, our brand new update to the skill capped add-on has just dropped, giving skill capped members the best UI for PvP with just one click. We've partnered with the world's best players to ensure the skill capped UI is ready for every class in the War Within, and to bring you exclusive guides that unlock the full potential of your class from maximizing damage to perfecting crowd control and outsmarting opponents with the latest tech. We've got you covered. While everyone else is just confused, you can instantly get ahead of the curve with our guides, which are designed to fast track your progress and put you miles ahead of the competition. We're even so confident in our service that we guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating or you're gonna get your money back. So why wait? Click the link in the description below now and join SkillCap today. Now, if you're familiar with Disc Priest and Dragonflight, we have been constantly bouncing between what is truly the best playstyle to make this spec really flourish. Is it to deal the most damage possible while benefiting off atonement, or is it to focus solely on healing? Well, after tedious amounts of experimental testing, it seems that Disc Priest is best played to maximize their healing potential to really keep things stabilized. After all, this spec is considered a tempo-based healer, and it requires a good amount of improvisation to make sure you don't fall behind. Though, you're going to be throwing out defensives left and right to keep your team active. In the War Within, we've experienced a bountiful amount of change that makes this a possibility, especially with Blizzard buffing our shields and penances by a hefty amount and an increase of 3% to our overall healing. Although there tends to be barely any change in our discipline tree, and with a couple changes that influence our playstyle and rotation, there's a lot more we've prepared to show you here that really makes our healing dramatically better. And that is hero talents. As a disc priest, you're gonna have two to choose from, Oracle and Voidweaver. Oracle is definitely the preferred go-to hero build, which possesses so many healing buffs that we really want to get our hands on. Preferably, our hallmark talent, Premonition, which grants us a specific order of cooldowns after one has already been used, reacting similarly to how Blessing of Summer is for Holy Paladins. Starting off with our first ability tied to this new talent, we have Premonition of Insight, reducing the cooldown by 7 seconds in PvP combat on your next three abilities. Now this, by itself, is such a versatile spell, giving us so many ways you can actually make use of it. Want to dispel three times? Well, you just go ahead and do it. Need to throw out three shields back to back? Well, knock yourself out. Find yourself throwing out two pain suppressions immediately? Screw it. Let's use all of our pain suppressions. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just calm yourself down there. As you can see, you can use this however you desire, but there is one way that this can be used to give you the most upfront healing possible, and that is by alternating between Penance and Power Word Shield with this active. By doing so, you can optimize your wheel and woe stacks and get the biggest shield possible on the enemy's kill target, making sure you can really protect your allies or yourself in dangerous situations with this cooldown. Afterwards, we receive Premonition of Piety. Having this active is super beneficial to your healing output since it buffs all of your healing spells by 15%. Not only does it supply a miniature Archangel in your arsenal of cooldowns, but this provides you with a bit of splash healing when your healing overheals targets, especially when you release those Power Word Radiances. Now we receive our last ability from our specific order of cooldowns, Premonition of Solace, which is quite fitting for a Disciplined Priest, as it gives you a huge absorb on the target you heal after pressing it, 
and some nice damage reduction on the target for 15 seconds. This Absorb is definitely a lifesaver in crucial situations where all your primary defensives have been used up, giving you a bit more mitigation without any downside. As its shield effect is not something that can be purged off, buying you enough time for another cooldown to rotate back and keep your team alive. Changing topics here a bit, we still have another hero build that's worth talking about though, and that is Voidweaver. Voidweaver has a hallmark talent, Entropic Rift, which fits perfectly as a Void-like ability that really packs a punch on your opponents. Now, in order to make use of this ability, you need to cast Mind Blast on the target you want the Rift to chase, and by doing so, this will deal some solid pad damage to nearby targets as it moves. Almost everything in our new talent tree here is to buff its effectiveness, making it optimal to constantly have this active as much as you can to achieve the most amount of atonement healing. But if you weren't already aware though, the talents offered to buff the effects mostly involve casting and opening up our primary schools. And with the amount of micro crowd control and mobility players possess nowadays, you may find it quite difficult to successfully land those spells to heal from dealing damage, hence the lack of this build being played in competitive play. However, if damage to heal really suits your playstyle as a healer, you're definitely going to find this more suitable in Battleground Blitz or 2v2 matchups that mostly require a good amount of damage without much direct healing to stabilize your team. Ultimately, as it currently stands, Oracle is going to be your defining pick out of the two hero talent trees, giving you a massive enhancement to your direct healing spells without being too reliant on our atonement healing. But now that we have a basic understanding of what these trees offer, it's time to delve deeper and discuss how to best allocate our new hero talent points. But before we get into it though, we do want to remind you about our free article site, which has just been updated for The War Within. As always, with the start of the new expansion, things can quickly change on a dime. So we're gonna be keeping all of the information found in this guide up to date in our article. And I've also included talent import strings there too, so do be sure to visit the link in the description below after this. All right, let's get back into the video. With Void Weaver being more of a niche pick here, we're only gonna focus our attention on what talents we can select for our Oracle talent tree. Starting off with the left side of the tree, we have preemptive measures. If you haven't noticed, this is key to the amount of healing we can pull off as this not only buffs Power Word Shield by 25%, but increases the amount of damage we can throw out with Penance, Smite, and Holy Nova, indirectly buffing our Atonement healing. Below this, we have Assured Safety, and although this doesn't look as important to our toolkit, four stacks of Prayer of Mending can go a long way to help stabilize our team. The best part about this is that we apply two healing spells with one global on our target, making us feel a lot more efficient in how we heal than before in Dragonflight. Now we have our first choice node, Prophet's Will and Desperate Measures. With the latter only suitable against setup comps where you need that extra boost in your defensives, Prophet's Will is really gonna be your preferred pick, as the buffs to Flash Heal and Power Word Shield, when applied on yourself, are always gonna provide you value. Coming up to the middle nodes here, we have Preemptive Care, acting as a passive buff to our Renew and Atonement duration. And we have another choice node after that, Divine Feathers and Save the Day. Both of these provide us with some quality of life improvements to our utility. Divine Feathers, with its movement speed increased to both ourselves and an ally we place our feather on, and Save the Day for that extra life grip we can use back to back. Singling it down to the clear winner for this choice node, we have Save the Day. Having two back-to-back -back life grips not only makes it delay more damage, but we can counteract those pesky death knights just a little bit easier as they more or less always have multiple grips up their sleeve. Almost kind of like a battle of tug of war where you are the one that comes out on top. And for our last node in the middle of our tree, we have Divine Providence, which allows us to have two charges of premonition. This becomes more valuable in solo shuffle where time is a little bit more limited, allowing you to gain more value early on as the game starts. Although you can use these together to increase your throughput during massive burst windows, 
you're more likely to throw out a pain suppression or a rapture before using both of your premonition charges at the same time. And by doing so, you give yourself more ways to trade defensively to further sustain your allies and keep the heels rolling. Jump into the right side of the tree now. We have a choice between Waste No Time and Miraculous Recovery. With how strong our healing is, Power Word Life is only selected against comps that really pack a punch, making it more favored to grab Waste No Time in most of your matchups. Although if you feel like playing Power Word Life, just do make sure to change this node to Miraculous Recovery for more uptime on Power Word Life. Then we have Foreseen Circumstances to reduce 50% of the damage taken on targets affected by pain suppression instead of 40. And our last choice node, we have Fate Bender and Perfect Vision. Although enhancing our premonition definitely does sound great to get your hands on, having more uptime on its effects does tend to be more favored, mainly in a bracket like Solo Shuffle where games just really end quick. Finally, we now reach our in cap talent, Clairvoyance and is available after using Premonition of Solace, allowing us to use all three Premonition spells at the same time. This is gonna be one of your strongest defensive cooldowns, aside from Pain Suppression, once this is available around the two or three minute mark of any matchup, and is especially valuable in solo shuffle rounds to have another way of counteracting two minute offensive cooldowns. And remember, you can find exclusive tips in our brand new class courses at skillcap.com, where we're going to be releasing new guides every week throughout the War Within. Skillcap members can also unlock premium profiles ready for the War Within in the Skillcap add-on. So don't miss out. Use the link in the description to start gaining rating today. All right, with the new additions covered, let's quickly go over what we are currently suggesting for your priest in discipline trees. Now, we see that both our class and spec trees are almost identical to Dragonflight, with both of these trees featured on the screen now being a good default for Oracle. As for our class tree, we have some noteworthy talents worth mentioning here though, such as Shadow Word Death to execute your foes at low health or to free yourself from breakable CC, Power Infusion and in combination with Twins of the Sun Priestess, to increase both your ally and your own haste by 20%, Phantasm to help you escape snares with Fade, assisting you with your mobility, and finally, Phantom Reach, increasing the range of our spells by 15%, allowing you to play more defensively and make incoming CC just a little bit more noticeable. If you're wondering about any potential changes in our class tree though, we do have some adaptations worth considering based on the matchup at hand. Improved Purify is great against Shadow Priest to remove Devouring Plague or against Unholy Death Knights that are bound to stack up diseases here. Inspiration is very helpful against double melee comps as this reduces some physical damage taken while it's active and is only applicable on a target when either Flash Heal or Penance crits on them. And Death and Madness if you want to empower your execute damage from Shadow Word Death. These involve swapping out Mind Control, Void Shield, or Void Tendrils, depending on what makes the most sense to you. Now, shifting gears to our Spec Tree, this remains totally identical to how it was in Dragonflight, with the exception of Rapture, as it now buffs our next three shields without any of them having a cooldown, diverting from the constant shield spam approach while this spell was active. Now, aside from Rapture, you're going to be quite familiar with most of these core talents that make up our rotation. Starting off, we have Atonement. Now, this is used not only to heal from our damage spells, but is actually pretty significant to our direct healing, depending on how much mastery you have. Purge the Wicked to make use of our Atonement and to weave in some strong flash heals with From Darkness Comes Light. And lastly, Ultimate Penitence, which can be used either defensively or offensively, depending on the current state of the game. If you choose to be the aggressor with this ability, you're going to want to apply Atonement on allies beforehand to also make use of its healing capabilities. Now, in case you really want to make use out of our Void Weaver talent tree, we have some talent choices that make this build work, which rely on grabbing talents from the bottom right side of the tree all the way down to Mindbender, which converts your Shadow Fiend on a one minute cooldown while maintaining the same effects. Plus, our hero tree grants us Void Wrath to make our Mindbender even better than before. 
The final step in setting up our talent loadout is discussing PvP talents. Now, out of all of our potential PvP talents, we have two that almost never change, Ultimate Radiance and Phase Shift. Now, for Ultimate Radiance, this is absolutely essential to both your on-demand healing and to spread atonement, as Power Word Radiance is now instant cast and it heals for 10% more. Phase Shift, on the other hand, is super helpful, as it provides you with a short immunity effect after using Fade, mainly for negating CC. Now, we do have one slot left that can vary based on what you're up against, but for most games, you're going to want to take Inner Light and Shadow. This can make your damage and atonement healing slightly stronger while in Inner Shadow, which is great for a bracket like Solo Shuffle, where games tend to end pretty quickly. But if you do play non-solo arenas, this can help us conserve a decent amount of mana while in Inner Light. Now, aside from Inner Light and Shadow, we have a couple optional talents that you can select for this slot. And to kick things off, we have Archangel or Strengthened Soul, which either of them can be picked depending on your preference. And these are mainly chosen against comps that deal a lot of single target sustain damage, like double melee comps, as they both help you keep up with the sustain damage that they're dealing out. Purification gives you an additional charge of Dispel and is extremely helpful against setup comps like Rogue Mage or into Mage Lock, where the enemy team is going to constantly be throwing out CC. And Catharsis if you're facing Rot comps that include Ellies, Aflocks, and SPs, as they're going to be most likely to attack you and deal damage from their direct spells and dot effects. Not only does this allow you to redirect some damage back from your next Purge the Wicked, but you can deliver some pretty nice atonement healing if a good amount of damage has been accumulated. All right, now that we understand the optimal talent choices and the reasoning behind them all, the next goal is going to be setting up our character. The first and most defensive horde option here is Undead, especially with most classes having a method of CCing with some fear-like effect. This is because Undead gives the racial Will of the Forsaken, which, upon using, breaks out of any fear applied onto your character. If you want to select an alternative horde race, Orc continues to be a pretty strong contender for Priest, granting us Blood Fury as a flat on-use buff to our primary stat, always scaling the best at the beginning of every expansion. Now, not to mention going Orc grants you access to hardiness for some nice stun reduction making it easier to get out of CC earlier and have an easier time recovering. Now, directing our focus towards the Alliance races, Night Elf continues to be one of the better options, and given a skilled enough priest here, it's hard to find a more impactful racial than what Night Elf offers, Shadow Melt. The most notable use out of this ability is to immune some incoming projectiles or some damage, which includes Chaos Bolt, Storm Bolt, or Mortal Coil to completely just negate their effects. And finally, Gnome also remains a pretty solid pickup as well. This is due to the racial Escape Artist, giving you a physical root removal that's off the global cooldown, meaning you can use this racial ability during silence effects, counteracting Boomkin's root beam combo. Overall though, none of the races really stand out above the others, so honestly, just pick the race that you enjoy looking at the most. So with races out of the way, let's take a look at what's shaping up to be your best in-slot gear for Season 1. But first, since you're likely going to find upgrades along the way, let's discuss stat priority. Our main focus here is going to be on versatility. This stat is an absolute no-brainer in PvP. It offers a solid balance of both offense and defense. And since our spec constantly alternates between the two in most matchups, you're going to want to pick up as much versatility as you can. Now, beyond this stat, we highly recommend getting as much Mastery as you can. Mastery for Disc Priest increases our healing and absorb effects on targets affected by Atonement, meaning you're going to want to have Atonement up as much as you can to acquire the most healing possible. After Mastery, we're going to be looking to add Haste into our gear. Now, although Haste is a bit lower on the priority than the other two stats, it still is valuable as it reduces the global cooldown and our casting speed. This also makes our Purge the Wicked tick a little bit faster, allowing us to maximize our From Darkness Comes Light stacks to buff our Flash Heal. And lastly, Critical Strike doesn't serve much of a purpose aside from Inspiration in our Clash Tree, making this stat more or less avoided. 
Over the next few weeks, you should look to collect your PvP scaled four set, with the exception of the legs, which should be Algari crafted with versatility and mastery. Every off piece should also be crafted with versatility and mastery too. And we're also going to do the same with our jewelry, but for our second ring, we're going to want to apply verse and haste instead of mastery. Our weapon is also going to be crafted, and for our trinkets, we're going to use the insignia and medallion, of course. Now let's get everything enchanted. For your cloak, you're going to want Chant of Burrowing Rapidity. For chest, Council's Intellect. Bracers, Chant of Armored Speed. Legs, Daybreak Spell Thread. Boots, Scout's March or Plains Runner's Breeze. And then for your rings, grab Cursed Mastery for both. Finally, the last enchant is for your weapon, where we suggest getting Authority of Radiant Power. Due to the addition of the Vicious Jeweler setting, you're now going to be able to add gems to your helmet, amulet, rings, belt, and bracers. One of these can be one of three unique PvP-specific gems. Out of these, we highly recommend the Cognitive Bloodstone, which acts almost identical to the Precognition Embellishment from Dragonflight. For the rest of your gym slots, the versatile Onyx Gym provides the best overall boost to your favorite stats. And as for your embellishments, we highly suggest using Energy Redistribution Beacon, as this allows you to transfer a bit of your health over to whoever you're healing at that moment, which gives you a huge boost to your teammates' survivability. Although, you can pick up Dark Moon Sigil Ascension on your weapon and Writhing Armor Banding on any of your armor pieces for some nice buffs to our secondary stats. Additionally, as the season progresses, we do highly recommend crafting armor pieces with Dusk Thread Lining, as this is more useful against rock comps where you are definitely going to be a potential kill target. Finally, let's wrap things up with a look at some must-have macros for Disc Priest. First, we suggest having focus macros for all your important crowd control, enabling you to CC off targets without the need to deselect your current target. So that's mind control and dispel magic. And for arena macros, these essentially do the same thing. And although it may seem a little bit more difficult to get into than focus macros, this is going to allow you to effectively apply a spell on any arena player in a 3v3 game without having to rely on player frames. As a healer base spec, one way to reduce target swapping revolves around using Party 1 and Party 2 macros. So if you're unfamiliar with these, Party 1 refers to the person at the top of your party frames, and Party 2 is the second person. The best way of doing this is what you see on screen now. There are also macros that redirect spells to yourself, minimizing downtime that you would have trying to target swap. If you feel overwhelmed with party and arena macros, you may want to use these macros that make your spell a little bit easier to manage. By including the mouse over condition, you can apply an ability to a player or an enemy depending on what target you hover your mouse over. For disc specifically, we highly recommend using this for Purify, Void Shift, and Shadow Word Death. Another type of macro we highly suggest picking up is Cursor Macros. These macros eliminate the reticle you see on a couple of spells that require you to click in order to place it on the ground. And honestly, it tends to be frustrating as a Disc Priest to deal with it at times, especially with Angelic Feather. We also recommend using our At Cursor condition on Mass Dispel, but is more of a preference as opposed to our previously featured macro. Jumping straight into our last section here, we have some miscellaneous macros that you may want to use as they give you a nice quality of life improvement to your gameplay. First off, we have our Fade macro that uses Stop Casting to cancel any active cast, so you can use Fade without any delay. This guarantees your safety at times where you want to immune some CC with Phase Shift. Now we have another Shadow Word Death macro. Not only does this one cancel all your current casts like our Fade macro, but also allows you to auto-target nearby enemies to immediately get our death off. Unfortunately, this macro does come with the downside of accidentally breaking CC targets, but in most cases, you can use this as your panic button. And finally, we have our last Dispel macro, allowing you to swap between Dispel Magic and Purify at ease. And to make use of this macro, this depends on who you're currently targeting. Targeting an enemy will allow you to purge, and for a friendly player, it becomes your magic removal dispel, pretty much killing two birds with one stone. 
And remember this, Skillcapped is the only service that guarantees you'll climb at least 400 rating. Now we make this promise because Skillcapped really does work. And if it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't pay. Think of it like a gym membership that guarantees you'll get ripped. Crazy, right? So get started today by clicking on the link in the description. As always though, guys, we wanna thank you all for watching and we'll see you soon.